Welcome to the wireless course. In this introductory lesson, we'll first do a short technical introduction to what we mean by radio and how it's used to communicate. Next, in this lesson, we'll go over the learning objectives of this course, what you'll be able to do after taking this course, and the knowledge skills you'll gain. Then we'll go through the lessons we're going to cover one by one, introducing ideas and showing how each lesson builds on the previous. The fourth part of this lesson is instructions for using the learning management system. Every lesson concludes with a few informal quiz questions to be sure you understood the key points. When we say wireless, we generally mean the use of radio, which is electromagnetic waves at frequencies measured in the gigahertz, that is, vibrating at 10 to the 9th or a billion times per second. We could, in theory, be discussing electromagnetic energy vibrating on the order of 10 to the 14th times per second. That's hundreds of trillions of times per second. That's called light. But one of the problems we have to deal with in wireless communications is obstacles. It turns out that the higher the frequency, the longer the distance it takes for energy to refract or bend around an object. Now, light does refract around objects. This is how we can tell they're planets around other suns. But the length of the shadowed area behind an object is too long for use on a terrestrial scale. If we reduce the frequency of the energy, the length of the shadow behind an obstacle shortens. In addition, lower frequency energy can penetrate through objects like walls and clouds more easily. There's a reason why foghorns are very low frequency. For these reasons, we tend to use energy at gigahertz frequencies, two or 300,000 times lower than light, and call it radio. So we'll be discussing communication centered at gigahertz frequencies in frequency bands with widths measured in the megahertz wide. Radio is used in many different kinds of systems with different applications, including everything from demagogues broadcasting angry rants on talk radio using analog AM, to mobile cellular systems for telephone calls, web surfing, and possibly watching TV, trunked radio for police communications, fixed wireless to remote residences, short-range wireless LANs, geosynchronous communication satellites, low earth orbit satellites, and more. Video broadcast, two-way voice communications, and point-to-point -point digital microwave communications were the biggest applications for radio in the past. Mobile voice and data communications is a significant business in the present. In the future, wireless will be ubiquitous. To represent information, we could take a single pure frequency called a carrier frequency and vary the amplitude, that's the volume, of the carrier frequency in a continuous fashion as an analog of the strength of the sound pressure waves coming out of the speaker's mouth. Or we could vary the frequency of the carrier as an analog of the sound. These are called amplitude modulation, AM, and frequency modulation, FM, respectively. When we want to represent ones and zeros, we have a more complex task. Since radio bands don't include zero hertz, sometimes called DC, pulses cannot be used to represent ones and zeros as they are on copper wires. Instead, it's necessary to use techniques similar to those used in telephone line modems to represent the ones and zeros, such as picking a frequency and shifting back and forth between specific amplitudes, specific frequencies, or phases, or combinations thereof. The objective of this course is to develop a solid understanding of mobile cellular communication networks and technologies. After taking this course, you'll be up to speed on the fundamental principles of cellular radio networks, components and operation, digital radio, spectrum sharing technologies, and the fourth and fifth generations of mobile cellular technology. An additional objective is a basic understanding of Wi-Fi and satellites. 
In particular, on completion of this course, you'll be able to describe the basic concepts of a mobile communication system, identifying the principal components, the objectives of coverage, capacity, and mobility, and the operation including registration and handoffs. You'll be able to explain what cellular means and why radio systems are designed as cellular systems. You'll be able to explain how digital cellular works and how it can be used for what used to be called data, which is now basically internet access, using a phone as a tethered modem to connect a computer for internet access, using a phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot for other computers to connect through, or of course surfing the web and using apps directly on a smartphone. Explain the principles and describe the operation of the different spectrum sharing technologies, FDMA, TDMA, CDMA, and OFDM. Define the term subcarrier, how subcarriers are used, and OFDMA. Identify the spectrum 5G will be deployed on and use cases for each. You'll be able to explain the basics of 802.11 wireless LANs, Wi-Fi and hotspots, and compare and contrast that to cellular radio. And you'll be able to describe the two basic strategies for communication satellites and the pros and cons of each. This course is comprised of the following lessons. Lesson number one, the course introduction, that would be this one. The first lesson begins the course with an overview of the course and lessons, plus general radio principles. This lesson is available for free on TerracomTraining.com in full quality. Click on the Online Courses tab from the home page. It provides both a walk through the course and a sample of the quality of the course graphics, text, and presentation. Lesson 2 is Mobile Network Components, Jargon, and Basic Operation. This is the basic components and operation of a mobile communication network, including the handset, air link, antennas, base station, transceiver, mobile switch, backhaul, registration, and handoffs. Lesson 3 is Cellular Principles. In this lesson, we'll begin with the requirements on the communication system, mobility, coverage, and capacity, then cover the idea of a cellular radio system and how it's used to meet the coverage requirement and how frequency division multiplexing was used to meet the capacity requirement in the first generation of cellular. Lesson 4 is PSTN phone calls using the phone app, also known as voice minutes in billing plans. We'll explore how voice is communicated over the radio access network and how it connects to the world to make regular telephone calls. In this lesson, we'll understand POPs, toll centers, and the legacy tandem access trunks that are used to connect the mobile network to the local phone company, to other local exchange carriers like cable TV companies and competing mobile operators, and to inter-exchange carriers. Lesson 5 is Mobile Internet, also known as a data plan. We'll understand how the mobile network connects to the internet at internet exchanges, transit and peering, and how devices can connect to the handset to gain access to its internet connection, using it as a tethered modem, implementing a Wi-Fi access point in the handset, connecting with Bluetooth, or of course using the smartphone itself. Lesson 6 is Spectrum Sharing Technologies, FDMA, TDMA, CDMA, and OFDM. Cell phones transmit and receive signals over shared radio bands. To separate users so that they do not interfere with one another, nor hear each other's conversations, service providers use one of four radio band or spectrum sharing methods. Frequency Division Multiple Access, Time Division Multiple Access, Code Division Multiple Access, and Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, OFDM. Lesson 7 is 4G LTE, Mobile Broadband. 
after more than 20 years of incompatible 1G, 2G, and 3G systems, 4G was the first world standard for mobile. Since 4G, along with 5G, DSL, cable modems, and Wi-Fi all use OFDM, we'll spend some time understanding OFDM, subcarriers, and modulation, and how 4G implements OFDMA to support multiple users. Lesson 8 is 5G New Radio, which brings us enhanced mobile broadband and communications for the Internet of Things. In the last lesson on mobility, we'll explore the fifth generation called New Radio and Standards Committees. You'll learn about the new spectrum for 5G, from the 600 megahertz to millimeter wave bands, and the bit rates to be expected at each. We'll discuss the design goals for 5G and finish with use cases including low bandwidth IoT applications and ultra bandwidth for VR. Lesson 9 is Wi-Fi 802.11 Wireless LANs. Here we provide an overview of the 802.11 Wireless LAN standards, Wi-Fi and hotspots. We concentrate on understanding the variations of 802.11 the frequency bands they operate in, the bit rates to be expected, propagation issues, and Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11ax, the first to implement OFDMA. Since 802.11 is wireless LANs, there are a number of associated topics. LAN frames, also called MAC frames, MAC addresses, LAN switches, also called Ethernet switches, IP addresses, routers, and network address translation. These topics are covered in other courses, particularly Ethernet LANs and VLANs, Introduction to Data Common Networking, and IP networks, routers, and addresses. In this course, we concentrate on radio. Lesson 10 is communication satellites. In this last lesson of the course, we'll take a quick overview of communication satellites, understanding the basic principles and the advantages and disadvantages of the two main strategies, geosynchronous Earth orbit and low Earth orbit, with an update on Iridium Next and Elon Musk's Starlink. We'll go over some instructions for using the MyTerracom learning management system. The best viewing experience is often achieved by going full screen. Press F11 if you've got a keyboard, or click the full screen icon under Settings in Chrome. The course is composed of a number of lessons, which are loaded onto your computer one at a time by clicking the corresponding link on the menu of available lessons for the course on your MyTerracom Learning Management System dashboard. Each lesson begins with an overview and discussion of the lesson objectives. Then the lesson is presented in several parts, followed by several quiz questions to help ensure you understood key points. The skip forward and back buttons at the bottom of the screen may be used to navigate back and forth between parts of this lesson, and the slider also works. Play, pause, and mute buttons are also located at the bottom of the screen. You can go back through a lesson as many times as you like. You can close your browser, then log back in the next day or the next month and you'll restart the same lesson until you click the Finish Lesson button to move to the next lesson. When you're finished the lesson, click the Finish Lesson button to go to the next lesson. After clicking Finish Lesson, please wait to see a screen with a large green check mark. This is confirmation back from the Learning Management System that your progress has been recorded. If it's been more than 30 minutes since you started the lesson, your session on the server may have timed out and you may see an error message. In that case, just log back in to continue. You can take any lesson anytime by setting the last lesson completed value on the lessons page to the appropriate value. Let's get started.